Gang members who refused to remove their patch in public when told by a police officer could have their houses searched. Legislation going through Parliament now would wear, would sorry, would ban the wearing of gang patches in public places. The policy announced before the 2023 election has raised questions about how gang members will respond when told to remove their patches and how police will enforce it. At a media conference this weekend, Police Commissioner Andrew Costa and Police Minister Mark Mitchell were asked how the ban would be enforced in the case of an event such as the Tangi on Monday of Ponsonby Road shooter Hone K. Selwyn. And let me just remind some people of what that was. That looked a bit like this. What's going to happen here? You see this stuff going on? Mm-hmm. You know, so what? How how were they going to handle it when that's there? When there's patches literally going past the police right there, three hundred patched members. Oh, license plate! Look at this, like the license plate. There's the killer bees. They don't seem to be getting hassled too much. I guess that's what the police would say. They have the ability to show discretion. That would be perhaps there. But that's also the example that this government gave. They got asked right away, what happens with Tangi with 300 people? I think that's the number that was actually said last year. And Mm. was the Prime Minister said, well, the police would be going in and taking them. I'm like, I think the world was like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's no fucking way that's going to happen. I think think what they're indicating here is that they're going to take a wait and see approach. That they're just going to take number plates and and that sort of thing, go door knocking a couple of days afterwards because there's no way that they're going to provoke something that would kick off a huge melee at a, at a tangy. Uh, so tangy. Well, can I, um, let me let me ask you yeah. this though, because you've said several times that you lived in uh, Timaru, brought up there where hmm. there were a, was a bikey gang. <coughs> Do you? I, cause I wouldn't think that license plate would go back to the house of where the guy lived. <laughs> That's the first thing. I mean, does it? I mean, is that your experience of knowing, you know, out, you weren't a part of it, but outside, is it like, oh, that's, look, they're, they're from number 14 Main Road. and Or is it, I would think they'd just have fake addresses or to the motorcycle club would be the address for all of the bike or something. Mm. Depends on how, d- different clubs do it in different ways. Sometimes they're, they're registered to the club. Um, sometimes they're registered to the person. But I, I, I think it's not just a case of looking up, up um, in the registration database or anything like that. It's like the cops do keep an eye on the gangs. They do have intelligence. They mm. have someone parked outside taking photos of who comes and goes. They put together uh, an idea of who who's in the gang. And, I mean, this is I, I've seen it mentioned in a, in a couple of stories uh, today. Um, they they got comments from someone who was a gang liaison officer, and and he was going, well, we got great results because we know who's in the gang, and we talk yeah. to the gang, and we ask them, you know, that sort of thing, and they might bar up, but then we go and ask them, you know, later just to pull their heads in, and 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 that's the slow gaining of trust between police and the gangs to get a result. Not sexy, doesn't get votes. Yeah. So now yep. they're going. They're going to put these people that have have put in the hard mahi to sort of get the gangs on side and going. Look, you know, we've all got to live in the community. We don't want a fucking war. Let's just kind of navigate this together. Well, and then th- Mark Mitchell's coming in and going, "No, burn it all down." Yeah. Well, this is it. I'm gonna let me read some more of this article because talking about we don't want a war. This is what Mark Mitchell said because he was asked about a reporter asked him about that uh, that tangy for um, the 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 killer beast tangy. He said oh, about 300 people. He said this. My expectation is if there are 300 gang members with 300 patches and the police told them to remove those patches and they refuse to do it, then the police will have follow up action and will take those patches, and it will mean searching their homes. So that's what the Minister for Police, a former police officer who, remember, says he goes by vibes. He actually, that's what he says. He goes by personal experience. Gang members hate having their houses searched. There's normally drugs and all sorts of stuff in there, and they don't want it to be discovered. You're talking about a search warrant as well. Normally, it's quite narrow in scope. Like there's a thing called the plain view doctrine in American policing. So that if they're standing next to your car, they can't enter your car. But if they see a drug paraphernalia through the window in plain view, then they're allowed to enter the car. Um, I think search warrants in New Zealand, if they find a secondary crime, they're allowed to 
you know, acknowledge it within that. But but the narrow the parameters are narrow. So they talk about going in and taking the patches off them at their home. So therefore, once again, let's say gang member X knows that the police are coming to take his patch and he hangs it out on the washing line and they take the patch, then what? Hmm. Very narrow scope, no plain view, all the blinds are pulled. It just what it seems to me like, it seems like this is a continuation of bumper sticker politics, a continuation of what we got told by Chester Burroughs as good headlines, but poor policing and yeah. poor policy. That's that's Absolutely. what it feels like. And it feels like Mark Mitchell is trying to be a big swinging dick. And I honestly does. It feels like he's trying to go, well, well, we'll just take all 300 of the patches off them as he sits on the ninth floor and with his yeah. prime minister in his new $50,000 office and the 19 year old new recruit is now facing a line of 40-year-old gang members going, could I please have your jacket, sir? You know, it just, it reeks of, of bumper sticker politics.